You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. And now back to TSPN News with Tom Slavik. Comprehensive news because in today's world, you need more than just sound bites. TSPN streaming on the World Wide Web and on demand at TSPNTV.com. Hi everyone, Tom Slavik, and welcome to TSPN's News uh, for Friday and uh, also the weekend. And with us today is our CEO and uh, manager of Amador County Sphere, Troy Bowers. How are you doing, Troy? Thank you so much, Tom. Good to have you on. Great. Thank you okay, for having it's always, me. It's always nice having you on, and it's always nice hearing about the Amador County Fair, which seems to always be in the back of our head, uh, you know, that it's coming up and it's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, everybody loves and appreciates it so much. Now, you just got back from the Western Fairs Conference. Western Fairs Association, our annual convention this okay. year in Reno, Nevada, at the Sierra Grand Hotel. I've been in the casino for five or six days and I feel like I got a little jet lag going. Uh, I don't know if you've ever, it's just, you could be, you'll never see sunlight and you don't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's no, all it's, good. I, I believe it's made that way. Right? Yeah, that's the theme. Yeah, that's what they try to do. Okay, so you just have a, a good time there and everything. And uh, tell us about the Western Fairs Association. Who all is in that? Okay, Western Fairs Association has over 150 members, agricultural fairs membership, uh, and basically from the Mississippi River West. Oh, so okay. we range from Alaska, New Mexico, Texas, Colorado, Idaho, Washington, Oregon, all of those okay. uh, comprise the Western Fairs Association. Are, do a lot of the states have uh, county fairs in it? Uh, well, they d have different formations, but basically it's the agricultural fair. So we call it a county fair here, but it's, a, it's the basic agricultural fair. And uh, you could, it is a county fair uh, where local, they're designed, right, to drive commerce in their local communities. They're designed to uh, practice, teach, uh, and improve best practices. That's what we're doing in the okay. art department, the uh, uh, pies, cakes, pigs, you know, particularly in our livestock department. That's, you know, make the best better. And it's also they're designed to uh, grow, teach, and produce the next generation of leaders. So many kids go out there and... Uh, you know, learn what they want to do for the rest of their life. They get those kind of real-world entrepreneurial business skills that they practice, and it kind of creates the basis for them for the rest of their life. Is that from the FFA side of it? FFA, uh, you know, 4-H, Grange. Do you see that as well as just with the, the, the kids that don't get that involved at that level, but, you know, that are uh, interested in, in, uh, in, in putting uh, things into the fair? You know, like in the, in the youth uh, uh, yeah, a lot side of, as well. Sure, we call those our independent kids. Right, there we go. Independent kids, and you know, we see them all throughout the fair. You'll see them working in the Rainbow Taco booth. Uh, they're there in the uh, wrestling uh, hamburger booth, okay. working to fundraise and and get money. You know, so uh, then they also enter a lot of projects into the fair, and of course, that leads to you know sparking that interest. You know, who who knows. You know, I know a guy who was out there videotaping a destruction derby one year, and he decided that maybe he'd uh, start a TV show. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, I, I think I was that guy. <laughs> yeah, uh, you were. <laughs> okay. And uh, so, so that's great. Now, at uh, Western Fairs, you were you were appointed, voted, elected, in, elected for that. Okay. Yep. How did that work? Uh, okay, so I serve on the Western Fairs Association as a board of director. I've been on the board for I don't know, 12 years maybe now, okay. eight years. Uh, and we kind of go through the chairs. So we start out, I started out, my path is uh, representing what we call the Motherload Area Fairs. And that's okay. the fairs from Nevada County, El Dorado, Mariposa, clear down to Ridgecrest, Calaveras County Fair. So I represented that group of fairs at the Western Fairs Association on their board of directors. Okay, so then two years ago, they elected me to be the treasurer. So we go through the chair. Okay. So elected by the board, the WFA board, to go through the chair. So you start out as the treasurer, then vice president, 
president, and then two years of past president. So we keep a continuous string and, and bringing up the next bunch. So uh, it's really a, a well thought out system. You know, I think it's the first Western Fairs was created in 1927. Seems like it helps uh, train the uh, CEOs for fairs as well. Well, that is the purpose of the Western Fairs Association itself. We look at that as our educational arm, our uh, service organization. They provide endless amounts of breakout sessions on everything from carnival ride uh, inspections to exhibit department, uh, inspiration, eyes, ideas, uh, everything. We cover the gamut okay. of everything. And fair. in that... Uh Association is Calgary still in there? I mean, that's a Calgary's very a member. Large, a, that's, yeah, that's a, a large fair. So we yep. have some fairs that are are um, big fairs. Yes, yeah. And uh, Amador County is that down there is the, the one of the the best. Well, uh, it is the number one small county fair. Okay, it says so right on our website. So I, that I know it's true. Well, I think we win uh, win an award for that. Um, we do every year. Right. We represent well, uh, but uh, basically, so when we go to the convention, we kind of gather. We have one session where we gather by size and small, medium, and large fairs. So of course, we we're in the small, but I can tell you, I. I uh, was in a group of small fairs, and I really think that that's where the action is. That's where the heart and soul, maybe that's not the right word, the heart and soul, but we're the closest, we're connected most to our kind of like Kind of like the smallness of the county and the cities. Uh, we know most of the people that are involved in the fair, yeah. and, uh, and, and you're the closest to the kids. Right. And uh, right. probably the businesses here as well, everybody knows just about every every uh, buddy by by name and uh, you know very have a very personal relationship with uh, most yeah. of the people it's a it's a personal relationship you're you're right absolutely right about that where uh, our relationship with our community is very personal not that the other fairs aren't but well, when you know, they get when they get quite large it becomes a, more difficult to, uh, right. to track all of that to be part of that I uh, had a great meeting with uh, the Kanaktai, not Kanaktai, but the Kenai Peninsula, Peninsula Fair in Alaska. Oh, okay. So you can imagine they have a huge uh, area that they serve. Of course, you know, people fly, you know, between areas in, in Alaska. But they have a community, 6,000 people, and, mm. uh, you know, 10 acres. So th that's pretty small. And I think that uh, in the meeting that, you know, we talk about the relevance of small fairs to their community. Uh, Brian, our friend down at the Mariposa County Fair, said okay. they're a full-service fair. So you get born there, you learn what you want to do for the rest of your life there, and you die there. So uh, that's how much more relevant can that be? I, I don't know. That sounds uh, about <laughs> as relevant as you can get there. So, you know, um, I think we went over a little bit of the, yeah, okay, let's go into a few more awards that uh, that our fair has gotten. I know, uh, uh, you know, I, <laughs> our artist that uh, draws, the, you know, the, the fair our posters. Poster. And his name just left me as soon as, I, as soon as I remembered it. It was yep. gone. Yep. Rand, who just uh, finished the uh, uh, out here in Jackson uh uh, the a sign for Jackson. I, yep. I just love his artwork. It's so, it's it's so great. Now, is he has he hit his twenty fifth yet? Oh, he's up to thirty now. I think he's done. This will be his thirty first okay. poster for us. Okay. Uh, we just. Uh, I he, think he's been maybe the twenty fifth or the award of being uh, uh, the best poster of the year or something. If they have well, that. Well, uh, he's either one first or second every okay. year. First or second. I think sometimes the judges, you know, will give it to somebody else just because. Well, it's. I know. We we got to give can't. people heart, right? Right. Otherwise, <laughs> no one will ever draw anything. <laughs> That's true. They won't either. I, I don't want to. I, I can't compete against that guy. Uh -huh. All right. So uh, so Rand's won quite a lot of things. What other awards have we? Uh, have oh, we, we let our publicity uh, really works well. You know, one of the things that we did this year was uh, in our crisis management. You know, during our uh, last year's fair, 2014 fair, hmm. uh, right. Friday oh, okay. afternoon of the fair, the sand Fine. fire broke okay. out, right? right? So I'm sitting there watching the replacement heifer program, a new program that we've done for our kids to teach them how to grow and make money in production cattle. Okay. So I'm watching that auction and that show, and I'm looking up, and there's this giant plume of smoke. 
in the horizon. And it looked like it was right, right. on the other side of the road, right? Everything looked like it was just right on the other side of the road. Oh, hill. it was so close. Real, and, right. And um, so, you know, your heart kind of sinks at first going, oh, my goodness. And uh, But it was I was so impressed with how the community rallied around there. And we became a secondary evacuation site during the sand fire. So right. that was huge. So we just kind of moved over all of our livestock, everybody, and we accepted animals from all through the county, those that couldn't you know, get to their homes or were threatened by the fire. We took them in, and it was just a great, uh, just a great story. 104 degree temperatures during the fair. Uh, our numbers still were very solid, even though, you know, it was pretty, it was smoky. Even though it was, uh, yeah, you, yeah, you had Saturday, that taste Sunday. of smoke in your mouth uh, yep. almost a lot of the times. Yeah, it all kind of cleared out in the afternoons, and, you know, it was pretty nice weather for our entertainment at the in our uh, right, arena. Right, the heat kind of helped out because then it would lift the, uh, lift the smoky air. Lift and the put smoke it, up. Put it, put it a little bit higher, and uh, you could walk around and, Is that how that and, works? and breathe. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, but, you know. So it was surprising because, uh, you know, uh, to, to ourselves, me, myself, Tommy, and some of the, of the crew, uh, of, of how it seemed like uh, it wasn't going on. Yeah. As, as far as quite a lot of the fear. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It, it just, scared everybody. It just went. It yeah. went right on. Yeah, the fair goes forward. The fair, you know, that's, that's Ambador County, baby. I'm telling you. They, um, I, you know, I just love this county. They don't want to be so much watching the parade. They want to be yeah. in the parade, you know, so they want to participate. They want to be in there. And that's why I think our fair is so strong. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back after this. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. And now back to TSPN News with Tom Slivik. Comprehensive news because in today's world, you need more than just sound bites. TSPN, streaming on the World Wide Web and on demand at tspntv.com. Hi, everyone, and uh, <laughs> we're back. I'm with Troy. Uh, Troy, we were talking during the break about how uh, our fear and other, probably other small fears or agricultural fears uh, probably are different when, you know, I come from L.A., so, you know, when we go to the L.A. Fair in Pomona, it's a rides, it's a food, it's this and that, and, you know, and uh, and you live in the city, so you're really not thinking that much about large animals, small animals, or anything like that. But here in this community, uh, we do, and other small fears, and that is, to me, when I, you know, came and, and saw this fear, that seemed to be the main uh, reason for the fear. Uh, was have, actually you can't probably put it in categories, but that was like the, sure. the biggest part was probably the heart and soul of that fair was was the youth and the kids uh, going out there on on Sunday, but all the work before they start like you know at least Wednesday doing things and then Thursday and Friday, and uh, it, it's just amazing. So I was saying that even during with that fire, I was a little surprised that uh, that the auction did better than uh, usual. Better. It was huge, over the top, gigantic. Right. It was uh, unbelievable. We hit records that we've never ever seen before. That auction. I mean, this community supports their children. They come out and they work and they make sure that those children are taken care of. So we've been at about three hundred thousand dollars gross for the junior livestock auction. All that money goes back to the kids. Right. And about 300000 for 8, 10, 15 years, a pretty low, you know, up or down a few thousand, uh, but right around 300000 This last year, 2014, over $530,000, over a 60% wow. increase. <laughs> it's just, you know, wow, what do you do? How do you, there's no way to explain it. I mean, it's pretty much the same guys that are there. There's always new ones come in. But the, the core group that uh, supports those kids, but that says... Actually, so there's some of the some of the older core group that isn't there anymore. Uh, you know, like Preston Castle people, uh, right. uh, the uh, car dealership, uh, Halverson's, yeah. Yeah. the family of, of all that. And, yeah. uh, you know, a lot of businesses that aren't here anymore that were very big uh, buyers at the fair. But... Uh, other people s step right up and it kept going. Kept going. You know, that's so phenomenal, too. You know, we went through this great recession. 2007, you know, Prospect Motors was the first one to, to go down. 
but and it just the whole air got taken out of the economy. But when it comes to that junior livestock auction, yeah, we're going to let the kids down. It's not going to happen. Well, they weren't letting anybody else down. They weren't going like, oh, uh, our uh, our future's uh, wrecked. Why, you know, we're not going to learn anything. It just was just plug it's, right along, it's, right? It's uh, you know, making it work, okay. Do, making it ours, making it the work. Paying forward to the future. That's what's going on out there. Okay, so we learned some uh, good lessons uh, through that, that, uh, you know, we can, we can uh, go on without the state. Now, that being said, it seems like there's this new story coming out where the state is, uh, in Jerry Brown's budget, has some uh, funding for fairs. That's it. Yeah, uh, for sure. You know, uh, we've been really working on this funding issue uh, since the 1990s. We knew as an industry, we had been associated with horse racing. Right. We used to get one-tenth of one percent of every dollar wagered at a horse race. And that was since 1936. And so you had a little bit of public funds from horse racing. You had the local uh, donations of property and cash. And you had a uh, local volunteers who built all that. There, so it's a right. kind of a three-legged stool. And those monies that the state uh, gives to the fairs, what is that used for? Where's that earmarked for? Well, there's not. They hadn't. It, it changed over the years. So in the beginning, in 1937, for probably 30, 40 years, uh, it was just uh, earmarked to do uh, the premium awards so you entered your your steer your your pie your cake that oh, okay. money was to go to there there was also additional funding monies that came in that they built all this stuff all the buildings out there uh, of course some was donated but a lot of that is was with horse racing money that built all the infrastructure that we have uh, for instance 1947 they installed our water system out there the uh, galvanized steel pipe served us so well in the last two Long or three time. years, forty-seven. I'm a forty-six Nin model. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I don't you know. think you're leaking as bad as those pipes are, but you know it, they've become a virtual um, soaker hose, and we're <laughs> we're sitting out on shale out there, and so we don't really see a leak for maybe a month or two months afterwards, and it's really caused a lot of problems, especially in the drought. We, as we see a leak, we, you know we replacing the sections of it like in 20-foot pieces. So we'll repair one, causes a little pressure. and What I've ever found with plumbing is like you, uh, when, when you handle one thing down the line, something just goes right out, right after it, right? Yeah. So when we get this uh, new funding, you know, we're going to earmark a, a pretty big chunk of that to fix that infrastructure stuff, the, the water system, the sewer system, the electric, the stuff that's not sexy. Okay. You know, uh, so just the core infrastructure. And that's what the public funds have, have generally done all along. Okay. And uh, that's good. You get that. Uh, those kind of things usually last a long time, as you're pointing out, or, uh, or it takes a long time to get around to fixing them. <laughs> oh, that? Both of that, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the financial situation for the fair from uh, last year, how well did it do? Did they have money to go forward into this year? We do. Uh, we have worked very hard. Our, you know, it, it amazes me that we are where we are considering all we've had to deal with. Uh, we are so far ahead it's because of the community support that we've gotten. Uh, you know, we, our, our funding stream is the from our interim rentals, our year, you know, you have parties out there, the right. bluegrass festival, destruction, you know, all of those things that helps support the fair and the fairgrounds. Right. And you have great facilities that people can uh, rent and use. Yeah. And if you keep those that those going, that helps uh, the fair get through the year. Yes. Yep. So uh, we kind of struggled with that 2011. That just kind of fell apart on us. We lost some of our bigger shows. Those look like they're coming back. And of course, the fair has always been a good money maker for us. So we had kind of a three-legged stool, little self, little public funds from horse racing, uh, the money from our year-round rentals, and the money that we would generate at the fair. That was kind of the, the model that we had worked on. So I think we're getting closer. We, it's, I can tell you that this uh, help from the state of California is going to 
It's right on time because it's been a long, we were completely removed from the budget in 2011 when Governor Brown right. came into office. Um, the foundation, the Amador County Fair Foundation stepped up, local sponsors stepped up, just everybody in the community rallied. People were donating uh, and helping us build, fix the roofs on the uh, first aid building. Now we had an anonymous donor say, hey, you guys need this. Actually, during, uh, during this time, uh, there's been quite a few uh, uh, great improvements uh, isn't the that grounds. isn't that for sure? Can I you think that, that speaks to a lot to the pr private sector and uh, private yeah, people. Absolutely, uh, you know, just moving forward because that's what you have to do. You can't rely on. Uh, you on, can't uh, rely. Yeah, we have to do it ourselves. We have right. to. It's ours, right? And that goes right in with the uh, with with the uh, the cowboys, the the, the farmers, uh, ranchers. Uh, you know that can do yep. uh, old American uh, work ethic, work and, ethic, yeah, and uh, lean in. Let's just do it. Lean yeah. in. We're going to do this. And, well, so true. I mean, in the last couple of years, uh, we made major repairs to the Benny Brown Arena to keep that going. That's one of our big revenue centers. Right. You know, we have three, four rodeos in there right. last year. We had a, we had a new that's rodeo unheard. that's never been there before, the Lions put on. Yep. Uh, so we've had a junior high rodeo, a high school championship rodeo the pro rodeo that the Lions did, and of course our, our uh, CCPRA, there's a local California Cowboys Association. Uh, so I'm working on, if I can get a college group in there now, that would, I'd have the whole spectrum well, of- College rodeo would be great. Wouldn't that be good? So, um, so many people, I mean, we are so far ahead. Major repairs on the General Mercantile. Major, they did, redid the whole front. The uh, termites the infestation in there was just, out of, I really think in a couple of years we would have starved them also, out. Also, it must help to have the uh, 49er uh, uh, trailer park out there uh, to uh, house and, uh, you know, to be able to, not house, but pr provide an area for, uh, for people to come in uh, that are going to the fair, that are uh, uh, participants in the fair. Well, we have a great relationship with the 49er Arbery Resort, Chuck Hayes, and he's one of our proud sponsors. A, Lifetime member, I think, of the Amador County Fair Foundation. Just a great partnership with there. You know, and, and that's how, how this works. You know, the events come to the fairgrounds. It, it fills beds, heads and beds, as I think they call it. And uh, yeah. throughout all the hotels fill up. We generate commerce. That's, that's why we were doing That's our, our primary objective, right? Generate commerce. Right. And that's the thing that the, that the kids learn. When when they're uh, raising their raising their animals, and I hear that, uh, you know, at the auction that they that they realize that's what it was. That's yep. it was a project to, to raise an animal yep. uh, to to move it uh, mm -hmm. down the stream. And yep. although it's going away, uh, and it's a sad day, it's also uh, uh, you know a, a climax for their efforts. Oh, in their payday, right? You know, and uh, you're so right. I, you know. You, those kids work so hard and get so attached to those animals because they've got personalities. And we're gonna we're gonna pretty much leave it like that, Troy. Uh, Thank uh, you so much. Congratulations and uh, it. and the fair. Do we, we tell everybody what the theme is? Country well, tunes and midway blooms. July twenty third through the twenty sixth, twenty fifteen. I think we just snuck that in. And uh, thanks for watching TSPN, and we'll see you again next time. You're watching Amador County's local television.